Hello everyone and welcome to the channel for another video. Today we have something very very special in store, a brand new smart telescope that is just now hitting the market. Let's check it out. This small telescope here could potentially destroy the Unistellar company. And what I mean by that is this telescope has one of the big features that the Unistellar telescopes are actually known for. That feature is the ability to switch between visual astrophotography and electronically assisted astrophotography. This means that this telescope not only is able to be used to image deep sky objects like galaxies and nebula, but it can also be used to look directly at those objects yourself through this small eyepiece right here. On top of that, it has a focal length of 212 millimeters and an aperture of 53 millimeters. That leaves us with a focal ratio of f4, which is actually very good for deep sky imaging. What we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna go through a little test run of how well this telescope actually works. And we're gonna go over some of the good and the bad things about this telescope. Let's get started with the EU Snap telescope by first taking a look at our nearest star, the sun. Quite thankfully, the EU Snap telescope actually does come with a solar filter. So you don't really have to worry about buying one yourself since it is already included, which I'm very grateful for. Installation of this filter is quite easy, just like you would use on a standard telescope. Simply remove the lens cap, put it on, and make sure that the filter is well fitted around the lens. Next, I'm assuming we just connect the device. Now, thankfully to look at the sun, it also does come with an actual uh, solar pinpoint finder. So you just take a look at this little target thing right here. I'll show you. You let the sun go through the pinhole and it should make a direct point uh, on that target and you'll know when it's centered. Now, I'm not really sure how to use this. It's definitely gonna be a tricky thing for me. I guess you just move it around like so. And you could change the speeds. There we go. It does move quite slowly. I do wish there were more than three speeds, but it'll get there when it gets there. I will say this pinpoint finder is actually super accurate. There it is. The sun is perfectly centered. Let me lower down this exposure time again even more. Now, it doesn't have an autofocus function. A lot about this telescope that I do like is that it doesn't stray too much from traditional astronomy. So it actually has a focus knob. And you find the focus just by turning this until obviously you have a much clearer picture. Now, there's the sun looking very nice and clear. I will say it is a little bit tricky to move around. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how the go-to functionality works. I'm also kind of wondering how long exactly it's also going to take uh, to perform the go-to because as you know, it definitely took a while for it even to find the sun in the first place. So hopefully it doesn't take too long, but it looks very nice. But yeah, it works just like that. Let's take a look at what it looks like through the actual eyepiece. Take a look at this. This is a direct view of the sun from the EGU Snap Smart Telescope and it was really cool being able to see it with my own eyes for the first time. Take a look. Obviously my iPhone camera didn't do the sun any justice. You couldn't see any of the sunspots, but actually being able to look through it visually, you actually can see the sunspots. I don't know why it's not showing up on the iPhone camera, but it's definitely very neat being able to see it with your own eyes rather than just on the screen of your phone. Now, question is, how well is the actual deep sky imaging going to work? Let's check that out. The way that I'd first like to test this telescope is on the ever-famous C2023 Atlas Comet. This comet has continued to get more and more popular every day, not only just with astrophotographers, but with also normal photographers who are able to take a picture of the comet just from their cell phone. I'd like to take a look at it from this telescope, possibly see how well it does with stacking on it, and also take a look at it through the eyepiece with my own eyes. Let's perform a go-to. One tricky thing about this telescope is that in order for you to actually do a go-to for a comet, you kind of just need to look for a deep sky object that's nearby the comet and then manually go to the comet from there. You can't do a direct go-to, they don't have it built into the catalog yet. 
Like I said, there is a lot of a lag between the telescope and the phone. Currently, I have the telescope set facing towards Messier 12. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that word. And since it's not really showing me live feed, I'm now doing a 15 second exposure to see if it's actually well centered on that deep sky object. The thing that I like about this telescope is that it actually uses an app on your phone rather than relying on a battery to do the stacking using an AI algorithm built into the EduSnap app. And the instructions for it are honestly very straightforward. As you can see, M12 is right there. So I'm going to attempt to do a go to manually from Messier 12 to the comet. I performed the manual go to and maybe my eyes are misleading me, but I believe I do see the comet there in the eyepiece. So I'm going to perform another exposure. I'm going to give it about eight seconds at gain 102. And hopefully I do have that comet centered. Okay, so one thing I noticed right off the bat, the camera used within the telescope is the IMX662MC, which is a fairly small sensor, meaning that the field of view of your phone is not going to have the same field of view as the eyepiece. So if you're trying to find something through the eyepiece, while looking at it through your phone, it's going to be fairly difficult. So unfortunately, I wasn't actually able to find the comet on the phone, but I am able to see it through the eyepiece, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay, here you go. The moment that you've been waiting for, a live view of this comet through this telescope. Take a look. While this might not look super impressive, the idea that you're able to get up close and personal with such a cool deep sky object is honestly fascinating to me. It's not that hard to locate once you perform a go-to on one of the other objects, but it might be harder to locate if you're just using a traditional telescope that doesn't have go-to features. So even though I couldn't really find it on the camera, the fact that it's easy to locate with this little telescope using the camera control definitely makes it easy for me to be able to add this telescope to my list of favorite telescopes. Okay, admittedly, it was a little bit disappointing that I wasn't able to see the comet through my phone, but it was really cool being able to easily locate it using the motor and being able to see it with my own eyes through the eyepiece. For me, that's definitely a big plus one. How well does this camera work on famous deep sky objects like the Andromeda Galaxy? Let's perform a go-to on that. The interface of the app could definitely use some work. It would be great if they could add more objects to the deep sky catalog and definitely add the sky atlas function like the Dwarf 3 and the Sea Star has. Thankfully, it is pretty easy to look stuff up though. You just go ahead and type it in. I'm going to type in M31 and we're going to perform a go to on that. I will say at least it moves faster doing the go to than it does when trying to locate the sun. Locating the sun takes forever. I know it's helpful because it does allow you to be more precise, but personally I like things to move a little bit quicker so I can get to viewing much faster. And honestly, I do forget sometimes in order for it to actually perform the go to, you need to make sure that you have the mirror facing so that the camera is actually able to see through the lens otherwise it'll all just be projecting through the eyepiece and it won't be able to perform the star identification properly and just like that andromeda has been centered so let's click next it took about three minutes so it wasn't too much of a wait i'm gonna bump up the gain again about to 86 hit save here and we're gonna take some 15 second exposures to see how well this does it is also quite handy that it does take dark frames and to do that you just cover the lens with a little lens cap Make sure you have no light leaking in there and hit OK. It will begin taking the dark frames and then it will automatically start shooting the light frames. The purpose of using these dark frames is to reduce hot pixels, which is going to reduce noise, which is greatly going to increase the quality of your image for if you're using it for EAA. And when I say if you're going to use it for EAA, I do need to mention this is 100% an EAA telescope. This is specifically for observing. If you try to use it for astrophotography, it's not going to work. It doesn't have any way of actually storing the files. Hopefully, EGSnap releases another version of this telescope in the future with more built-in capabilities such as autofocusing, a built-in storage, things like that, so you don't have to rely as much on your phone. If you have to rely more on your phone, then it's going to have more of a lag time, and the overall experience of using the telescope isn't going to be as enjoyable. There, right there, is the first visuals that we are getting of the Andromeda Galaxy. You can see the core of M31 and the smaller core of the galaxy that is right beside it. You can see some slight banding in it. Definitely the exterior is not as obvious. I'm sure that they do need to do a lot of work on the algorithm to make the stacking actually bring out more light rather than increasing contrast. I'm sure they will do that in the future, so I'm not going to count that as a point against them. 
it's still really cool knowing that you're actually able to look at a galaxy right here on your phone. And of course, if you'd want to, you can stop it here and you can look at it yourself through the eyepiece. Before we go to that star cluster, I'll let you take yourself at what the galaxy looks like through the lens. Right there in the center, you can barely see the core of the galaxy itself. Although admittedly, it's really not much to look at. It's definitely better than what we got from the Beaver Lab telescope. All right, so the go-to has now been performed. Let's start taking some pictures and see how well it works out. And there is the Hercules cluster. It's definitely a lot more obvious than the Andromeda galaxy. It's kind of hard to go wrong with this deep sky object. It's definitely very bright. I'm sure through the eyepiece, it looks absolutely spectacular. So I'm definitely excited to take a look at that. As I mentioned before, this telescope is definitely more to be used as an EAA telescope. It has almost the same visual quality as the Unistellar telescope, which are about $4,000 or $3,000 just because it has a little eyepiece built into it. This telescope has that built-in eyepiece. Of course, you can't take the data off of it. And I mean, looking at the actual data, the star shapes aren't that good. Perhaps it could use a flattener in the lens. Fortunately, because they use an ED lens, I can tell in the glass, it doesn't have much chromatic aberration at all. Definitely need to work on the algorithm that they have built into the app. Of course, it's not even available for iOS yet uh, as the Kickstarter is still going on. Of course, we all know this is a startup company, so they need all the support they can get to grow it, explore their technology, and create awesome products for us to use. Remember, this is the first telescope made by EduSnap. I'm very grateful that they were able to reach out to me to see if I would like to test it out. And I'm super excited to see where they go from here. Let's look at this through the eyepiece and we're going to look at one more deep sky object. One is definitely a fan favorite. Here is the ever famous Hercules cluster. Let's take a look at it through the eyepiece. Definitely not as impressive as I had hoped. As I mentioned, the 662 sensor has a very small field of view in comparison to this. Hence probably why it doesn't have as high of a resolution as you would expect from this telescope. But I guess it's still pretty cool. Now this last deep sky object I want to be 100% clear about. I do not expect it to be good at all. Of course, we can always hope that it's going to be good. But if you're looking at a planet through a telescope with 212 millimeters focal length, you really can't put high expectations on. Of course, it's still cool to be able to view it through the eyepiece, as I mentioned. Just don't have it in your head that it's gonna be this incredible James Webb NASA Space Telescope type of view. Just remember that. Let's perform the go-to to one of our favorite planets, Saturn. Let's check out and see if the go-to is actually correct or not. Of course, let me first check it through the actual mirror to make sure it's actually properly centered. It didn't do any kind of plate solving on this one. You can't really plate solve a planet. So let me check it visually and find out. Okay, so I'm not really gonna show what the video looks like because Saturn is literally just a little tiny dot, just a little tiny pinpoint. Again, it is cool being able to see it through the eyepiece. You can barely make out the rings. I'm gonna show you the video uh, through the eyepiece in just a moment. But for, again, EAA, as in astrophotography, it's not the best. Uh, on planets for sure definitely not for the sun it works great the sun was really cool to be able to look at it was actually my first time visualizing it i had always just seen it through a tablet screen or a tv screen i had never actually seen it with my own eyes so being able to see that with my own eyes was really really neat being able to see the comet up close with my own eyes was really really cool even though i wasn't able to find it on my phone and being able to see hercules cluster on the phone was really really neat even though it was just very very tiny through the eyepiece of course what's definitely cool about this eyepiece is that you don't have to stick with the 25 millimeter if you want a higher zoom you can always change it out for eight millimeter or four millimeter unfortunately i don't have one of those right now because mine got covered in dust so i just figured it would just be best to just stick with the one that they sent here but the things that i really like the most about this telescope time to talk a little bit about the pros and cons before i show you what saturn looked like through here Pro number one, the auto go to function is really, really handy, especially if you're not familiar with where deep sky objects are located in the night nice sky. Pro number two is the price. This is the cheapest smart scope that I have ever seen on the market, apart from Hestia, which I wouldn't technically call the smart scope since it doesn't do the go to function or anything like that. Currently, I'm pretty sure it's priced at about 136 US dollars for the beginning of the Kickstarter campaign. And once it's done, it's only going to be a price a little bit over 200 bucks, which is again, a really, really good price for a go-to motorized scope. 
with a built-in IMX662 camera. Not to mention the fact that you can look through it with an eyepiece like you would be able to with Unistellar. I would honestly compare this a lot to a Unistellar. Of course, the Unistellar telescopes have a lot more light gathering capabilities. The only good thing about Unistellar telescopes is the fact that you can look through the eyepiece. I wouldn't even use that for EAA. I wouldn't use it for astrophotography because the optical quality is just not good. So the fact that we're basically getting a Unistellar telescope for literally a tenth of the price is mind blowing to me. A lot of these telescope companies kind of need to watch their prices and see if their telescopes are actually worth it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Another pro about this telescope is that you can change out the accessories as much as you want. It has a built-in dew shield, it has a pinpoint hole sun locator, it comes with a tripod with a built-in level. Let's check out and see if the go-to is actually correct or not. Not only that, but the telescope is also interchangeable. If you release this knob, you can take the whole telescope and the camera off. Meaning that perhaps in the future, EGSnap will release a larger telescope where you won't have to buy the motor, you can just slap the telescope and camera on there and you'll be good to go. Let's talk a little bit about the cons now. Con number one, it doesn't have a built-in battery. Of course, that would probably bring up the price. And personally, I didn't mind having to buy a $30 pocket juice from Amazon to power my telescope, which lasts for several hours. So not a lot of complaints there, but it is just one small factor. Con number two. It has a very short focal length for a lot of the deep sky objects I like to view. And despite it being a focal ratio of f4, it doesn't have a lot of light gathering capability as you noticed with the Andromeda Galaxy. Con number three is the fact that it can't actually be used for astrophotography and is specifically used for EAA. However, it's not necessarily a con if you are just getting into astrophotography and into astronomy and you want a telescope where you can just look at stuff. It's easy to go to just to get you started this is definitely a good choice for you because of the price. All in all, I really, really like what they did with this telescope. I hope to be able to work with them again in the future. They definitely have a really cool concept here, and I'm really excited to see what they're gonna do with their products soon in the future. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below to let me know what you think about this telescope. And as always, I wish you all clear skies. And before you go, Here's a live view of Saturn. As I mentioned, it's not much to see, but you can definitely tell what it is due to the oval shape. Chris guys, everybody.